Today we are going to go over how to do an RL circuit, um, see what it looks like in the time domain, but we are going to do it many, many different ways. And then you can decide uh, what's the best way for you. Now, if you really know everything I'm about to say and are just want to know how to do like a, a simple uh, problem, I'll show it at the end. But you might not really understand what I'm saying at the end unless you watch the whole video. So what we have here is an RL circuit. They're in series, as you can see. And let's try the time domain. And what I mean by that is the differential equations approach. And there's the mesh and the nodal approach. So let's just start with the mesh. So there's one current. The current is going in this direction so that we get a plus minus drop and then we get a plus minus drop. So the mesh method, we sum the voltages and they should equal zero, which we do. Then we replace these voltages with the current equations. So what's the voltage here? I times R. What's the voltage across an inductor? L times the derivative of the current divided by the, in respect to time. We solve, we rearrange our different first order differential equation like this, and we get the derivative of something equal to the inverse of the something. There is only one thing that solves that, and that's exponential decay. So I don't, I know a lot of differential equations textbooks go in to a long convoluted process, but really, when you have the derivative of the thing equaling the negative of the thing, you only get exponential decay. Now, why would it, this would be kind of a generic exponential decay? Well, the initial conditions was I, was I not. The only thing that makes that work is uh, having I, this whole thing scaled by I not. We have minus RL, T, and we'll get exponential decay. All right, now the time domain differential equation is a little more involved. So I set up my nodal currents. And in this case, I have them both leaving. So I have plus minus, plus minus. And now I have node voltage one, which is measured from here to ground. But notice that's, um, so the current we have now, we saw in the current equation, these currents equal zero. Well, the current through a resistor, that's easy. That's node one voltage divided by R. But the current through an inductor, turns out you have to do this integration. And it's not dt, it's d tau, because we're ultimately coming up with a function of t. All right. Well, uh, an easy way to do this is just to, to take the derivative of that and find that equal to 0. All right, we'll come back up here and then solve uh, that differential equation. Again, the derivative of the thing equaling the in negative of the thing can only be exponential decay. Now, how do we find the current? Well, finding the current through the inductor might be difficult, but it turns out that you know because these are in series, the current is in fact the same. So all I have to do is take the voltage and divide it by the resistance. All right, this voltage divided by that resistance would be this voltage divided by that, and I get the exponential decay. Now, we can do this in the Laplace domain. All right, and how do we get the initial condition? We take the inductor and we put a voltage source that's actually in the opposite direction and that voltage source is equal to the initial current times the inductance. So the mesh way we sum up uh, the voltages VR plus VL equals the initial condition. We put it all in the S domain solve for I we get this equation which the L's cancel, and you just look up the inverse uh, ta uh, Laplace transform table, and we get our exponential decay. The nodal, a little more involved. 
but nodal currents are the same but notice um, it's V1 plus this voltage not minus because this was in the opposite direction divided by the impedance of the inductor V1 divided by R that equals zero multiply and simplify and we get the voltage equals minus I naught divided by this relationship which then when we solve for V1 is minus I naught R divided by this um, polynomial. Now we notice that IR is still going to be the same as IL. Maybe I've got these going in the opposite um, directions but really it's still a series circuit. So it's the same. All I have to do is take V1 or VR if that will divided by R which in this case it's defined backwards so I get minus V1 divided by R, put all that through. I'm back to this equation again, take the inverse Laplace, I have my exponential decay. Now, you can do the same thing by trying to find the current through the inductor directly. So you take that voltage drop and divide it by the impedance. We do some math and we get this equation where we have our initial condition divided by S, we have this, but we got this extra S. What are, what's going on here? Well, this isn't really a second order equation. This initial condition is kind of like an input. Let's put it that way. So what we do is use partial fraction expansion. And you're going to have to look that up. I'm not going to go over it right now. Uh, we're running out of time. But when we do that, we get minus IO over S, which cancels this out. And then we get this equation again, which the inverse Laplace gives us this. So really, you can do it that way, but it takes a long time. Where if, you know, you just took that voltage and divided by the resistance, you would get it. Now, that is seriously a lot of work just to do, you know, one problem as if you'd never seen it before. But the thing is, is once you know RL circuits, you know there's exponential decay. The current is going to have the form some constant plus another constant times the exponential decay. In the previous example, A just equaled 0 and B equaled I naught, and tau equaled the inductance divided by the resistance. So here we have a EE101 uh, problem where we have all this current going through. And then the switch is closed, so all the current shunts through that switch. And then what we have is the energy here needs to dissipate, which we would get here. Well, I know that this is a first order circuit. There will be exponential decay somewhere, and it will have this form, right? And A is going to be zero because it's going to start at something and go down. There's no power supply or anything. It just will decay towards zero. It's because uh, this is all in series, that initial current has to be whatever that is. There's no, now yeah, there's some problems with a resistor in, in uh, parallel with that, but i um, not going to worry about that too much right now. All right, so it starts at the initial condition and then decays to zero. So A equals this, the B is this. You have IT equals I naught E to minus T divided by tau. So we know everything. We know the shape of the curve. We know the initial condition. We know where it ends. But what's tau? Well, an easy way to find that is actually go to the S domain. And we just use a natural response. We sum up the voltages, put it in terms of current, have it set equal to zero because we're going to find where this part of the polynomial goes to zero because that's how you find the inverse Laplace transform but we don't need to go through all those steps we just need to find out where s equals zero so if i were zero this equation would be boring nothing to talk about so we get rid of it what inside makes it go to zero well that's s equals minus r over l it's a negative root 
and so what that means is when we take the inverse Laplace transform we get exponential decay not exponential increase so the current we knew what this was we knew that it was going to be exponential decay and now we know that tau or 1 over r is 1 over tau gives us our value so while yeah there's many many ways to do a problem a lot of times it's best to kind of intuitively do things and say this is just an RL circuit there's gonna be exponential decay and then you might have uh, thought you know is you might forget what tau is is it R over L is it L over R oh god I can't remember I tend to go through this way to find what S is so that I can get it. You might say, well, what are the units of H? What are the units of resistance? All right? Well, divide them out, and it's 1 over second. But I honestly can't remember this. That's just too much to remember. So I'd rather this procedure I use so often... Uh, as an engineer that it's easier to remember that procedure to find tau than to remember units all right um, and then yeah just a quick review we start off at I naught and then it decays exponentially to almost zero in five tau because e to the minus five is pretty close to zero all right, and this is just an LT spice file where dot IC initial condition of that inductor is one milliamp. Make the parameter of the L1 resistor two ohms. I can calculate what tau is, and then I can set my simulation time to be automatically five times that. All right, so the way that would work is an LT spice is oh let's say I wanted what if the initial condition were an amp and what if the resistance was 20 ohms oh, my bad I gotta change it there all right it starts off at one the time is changed but notice the way I've automatically set it up is that um, I'm automatically simulating for 5 tau. And so you can, if you look right there, it's not exactly zero. But uh, from an engineering perspective, if I was measuring this on a scope, that's, that's what we would call uh, zero.